you turn it off. All right, so um, good morning. All right. Um, in today's lesson, we're looking at uh, <clears throat> three main items. Uh, as I've mentioned, um, aligning images to text, uh, text wrapping images. Uh, um, then we'll look at three types of breaks. Uh, so in this case, we'll look at page breaks, session breaks, and column breaks. Okay? All right. So um, with the first item, before we do the alignment, we want to be sure we have... Um, the alignment guide active, okay? So the easiest way to do that is to click on the image here. So click on image, the image you see over here, and then go to picture formats. All right? Now, when you go to picture formats, to the session that has the label arrange, to the far top of that session, you see align objects. Can you see that? Okay. Click on the drop down and make sure use alignment guide is on. Right? So by it being on, you should have the check button by it. All right? Okay. So now we have this working. Now, the common question you get in your IG paper will ask you to um, test wrap an image, right? So how do we do that? Um, to test wrap the image, first of all, when you click on the image, you realize that the, it's a pop-up that comes up to the far right, top. That's the layout. Now, this here is the same as the wrap test, okay? This symbol you see here is the same as the, uh, the wrap test. So when you click on this here, your interest is on square. So make sure you select square or you choose square. Now, once you do that, the image can be moved anywhere freely. Okay? Okay, now we're going to take note of two things as we are doing this alignment. Now, we, you realize that when you drag the image to the far left, a green bar appears, right? And when you go further up, a green line appears as well. But what you have to notice in this case is that our ruler is not on. So I'm going to turn, turn on the ruler by going to view and then ruler. Okay, now you can see the edge of the margin on both the horizontal and the vertical, right? Now, so if I come a bit down and a bit left, you'll notice that we have the green bar both to the left and to the top. So this simply means that this image here is aligned to the top margin and aligned to the left margin. Is that okay? If I do the same thing to this side here, you realize that I have exactly the same green line showing. That means the image is aligned. But without the green line, you, you may be able to, you, you are tempted to go beyond it without knowing. Is that okay? So that's the essence of that particular guideline. Okay, now we're going to do the next one, which is to test wrap the image. Now, if I drag this image down here, I want it to be in alignment with the top passage here. Okay, um, so let's watch carefully. Now, it's aligned to the top margin, right? Now, is it aligned to the word I have here? See, as I drag it closely, and you can see that the alignment has come to the top where I have um, passing ICT exam is very easy if you know what to do. Can you see that? So this is in alignment to that particular um, paragraph. And again, aligned to the left, to the margin. Is that okay? So that is how to do alignment. Now, before I move on to the next thing, images can also... Um, you can be asked this <coughs> common questions, resizing the image, okay? Again, to resize the image, just double-click on the image. Now, when you double-click on the image, and again, you go to picture format, you notice that to the far right, you have size as a label, right? 
and uh, you have the option to crop part of the image or to resize it using this dimension all right now let's assume this question want us to resize the height only maintaining aspect ratio what we have to do is just delete uh, whatever is there and put in three centimeters or just three because it's already in centimeters so when i click on that you notice that the height here is three centimeters and this width has been adjusted automatically However, this will not work if we temper with a, a certain, okay? So let's click on this drop down here. Now, when you click on this drop down, you notice here that we have lock aspect ratio. Do you see that under scale, lock aspect ratio? If you uncheck that and click on OK, let's see what happens if I change this here to 5 and click on OK. Did the width change? No, the width did not change. So, um, in all cases, it should be on log aspect ratio. Is that okay? Unless the question requires that you do exact dimension for both the height and the width. So, for example, you need me to do four centimeters height and then four centimeters um, of the width and you hit enter. Now you realize that although I've done four centimeters, four centimeters here, it changed it, it didn't maintain it the way I wanted, right? So in order to achieve that, we go back, remove the lock aspect ratio, and then put in, in this case, the absolute height we want, which is four. <clears throat> and then again, the width we want is what? It's four. And then you click on okay. Now, you realize that when you come here, you have four centimeters again, four centimeters, right? So that is when you're asked to use an exact dimension to um, alter the text or the, sorry, the image that you have, that is how to go about it. But if that is not the case, always make sure that log aspect ratio is checked. Okay? All right. So now, again, if you look at... Um, Test alignment, which we got from this here, you can see that it's exactly the same thing here. All right? All right, but that is not what we are interested in now. Now, the next thing we can be asked here has to do with rotating the image. So, um, again, you can be asked to either rotate the image to a certain angle or flip the image, right? either horizontally or vertically, right? Now, to do that, you click on the image again. Now, so image, if you want to play with image, mostly it's within a range and size, okay? These are the two things mostly you are, you are going to use for images. Now, again, if you come to arrange, that's the last option here. If you look here, it says rotate object, right? So you click on the drop down there, one that looks like a triangle under arrange. When you click on it, you have 90 degrees. Can you see that? The arrow is pointing in this direction. So if you are going in um, that direction, what is it? Clockwise. What about if you are going this way? Okay. And then you can be asked to flip the image what? Vertically or horizontally. Is that okay? Now, if you notice first, the line of the, this bar here was below. So if I flip it vertically, it goes up. Is that okay? And if I do horizontal, it comes down. So initially it was here. So if I flip this way, then I've done what I've been asked to do. Any question on what we've done so far? Okay, so the question here is, um, is this in alignment? Yes, it's in alignment. And the text wrap, do we have any issue with the text wrap? No, good. Will you be able to resize the image or any given image to a specific um, length with aspect ratio and without aspect ratio? Okay, good.
So I think uh, that is that uh, when it comes to image. I, I mean, those are the questions mostly <coughs> that will be asked. Sorry. So um, let's just undo everything we've done. Okay. So this is where we started from. Okay. So now we move on to the next item, which is uh, paragraphing. Okay. So now let's look here. When we talk about paragraphing, it's very, very crucial um, as far as your example is concerned. So I'm going to just move this image down. Okay. Somewhere here. And then um, go to home, click on the home button, and uh, come to paragraph. Do you see paragraph? Good. Very important um, tool to use. Click on the, the number that looks like a, a, a 9, the P10 upside down. It's called hide and show. All right. <coughs> now, this hide and show reveals that there are a lot of spaces here, which came up as a result of clicking the enter button. So right now, if I hit the enter button, you can see they are increasing in number, right? So I want to remove all this. So I just highlight and delete, right? You highlight everything and what you delete, right? My image is still here. Um, so I just wanted to lie somewhere there. Okay. So <clears throat> now I'm going to go into paragraphing. And please pay attention. Now, mostly the paragraphing you'll be asked to work on will be on the hostile specification, right? When we talk about hostile specification, this has to do with these galleries. These are styles, okay? So a style that suits a particular house, a company or institution. So that is just the name for it, hostile specification. Um, that is the name that has been used for your exam so far, right? So if you want to change any specific style, this is where you do it, right? But um, what we are doing is just to show you what to do within the style specifications, okay? Just in the paragraph session, okay? Now, um, this is what I'm saying. So um, if I come to modify, for example, and I'm asked to change the paragraph of any style, we go to format and we go to paragraphs, right? No, so the paragraph will bring us to this view. Is that the okay? case? Okay, so all I want to do is to just show you how to do the paragraphing so that when you get into the house style specification, you know what to do. Now, you can get to the paragraphing by clicking on this drop down here. And that is it. But this is not when you are doing the style specification. Do we understand? All right. Alternatively, you can put the cursor in front here and go to paragraph. It opens the same icon. All right. Now, here, please pay attention. <clears throat> uh, I think in your past question, uh, sorry, the mock that I gave you, I ask that you indent the first paragraph or the first line of every paragraph, right? So to indent the first line of every paragraph, you look at the indentation position here. And then your interest is on special. And then you choose first line. First line. Is that okay? Right. So when I choose first line, mostly you can be given a dimension, say 1 cm. So you put that dimension right here. And then you click on OK. Now what happened? It's indented, right? Good. Now, <clears throat> if you do this in a house style specification and apply it to everything here, you realize that for every paragraph, this will go in to 1 cm. Now, because I've done the indentation for this one, if I click on the top key on my keyboard, okay, on your keyboard, the top key is um, the two arrow going in the opposite directions. When you click on it, the next paragraph should be in alignment with the first one. Is that okay? But when you are using the style specification, you don't have to do all this. You just select it and it applies it to everything. 
Is that okay? All right. Now, so this is when you are supposed to make the first, uh, <clears throat> the first line of a paragraph hanging, okay, or indented. Do we get that? Okay. Now, what if we do this here? What if we just do one centimeters? I'm sorry, one centimeter here to the left and say, okay, what is happening? <clears throat> It indents, okay, let me highlight everything here. So this is what I have here. Is that okay? And paragraph. And then I come to the this place and do one. I say, okay, what is happening? It moves the entire paragraph, YCM, to the left. Sorry, to the right. Is that okay? Do you understand? That is the use of that indentation. But... For your questions, mostly you get this one here, the first line hanging. So this here will be zero. Is that okay? So this is mostly what you use. First line and then you do that. Okay? Now, again, we have the option of hanging. Okay? So let's undo and um, see how the hanging behaves. So again, paragraph and then I choose hanging. Sorry. Hanging and then select, let's say, what? And say, okay. What is happening? What is hanging? Very good. So what is hanging is that, in this case here, apart from the first no, sentence within a paragraph, the remaining um, sections of the paragraph are indented. That is the hanging. Do we get the difference? For the first line, it's only the first line. For hanging, the remaining text. Do we get it? Right. But mostly for your exams, uh, you are asked to do the first line. Okay? Any question on what we've said so far? Okay. So that is it on the paragraphing. The last item I want to touch on with the paragraphing will be be this. I'll just do this here. Um, please watch carefully. Now, let's assume that this image is here, right? And um, and some question they'll ask you to make, uh, have this image to, there should be uh, a six points after the image. They ask you to insert a six point after the image, or a six point after the image. A six point what before or after the image? Now, so let's look at this. If we want um, a, a six point to come right after this image, this is what you do. You still use paragraph, okay? Now this is spacing. Do you see that? All right. Now before because we've put the cursor here, we'll use the option before so i'll put in here six and this year is zero okay so if i put this point before and click on okay has anything happened what happened it moved right so if you want it to be obvious let's do that can you see it now right so that is how to insert a point after an image in that case, you use this paragraph setting to do that, just like how we, we've done it. Because it's not supposed to change the gallery, okay? So that you do it individually by just inserting that point. All right. So that is it on paragraph. And then the last item we want to look at is the um, type of breaks, right? So um, the type of breaks that we... Um, mostly deal with has to do with the page break okay now so let's start with the first one to get to do anything on page break you go to layout so you click on the tab layout now let's put the cursor on the first paragraph <laughs> on the first paragraph <clears throat> Go and sit with Nanako. I hope you are all doing what I'm doing. You are not just watching. 
All right. So you put the cursor on the first paragraph here, which is uh, passing ICT exam is very easy if you know what to do. Okay. Now again, it is easy to pass if you practice and solve past questions. Now, I say students who were not academically what excellent have made a grade of B. That's if you are if you put away all form of playing, you can do you can what do pass and pass well, right? All right. I'll ask for help when I need it. Okay. So back on what I'm talking about, paragraphs, or oh, sorry, breaks. So I'm touching on breaks here, okay? So please pay attention. I mentioned that breaks are done with, within the layout. And under the page setup, right, you have para, um, breaks at the top here, right? Breaks is the first, uh, the last option to the right. So you click on the drop down. When you click on the drop down, there are a lot of options here. We have the page break, the column, the text wrapping, right? Then we have next page, continuous, even, odd, right? Now, our interest will be on the page break, the column, next page, and continuous. For both sessions, we are just looking at two. So when you look here, this is page break. The page break, we can do the page break itself, and then we can do a column break. And under the session break, we can do next page and continuous, right? So I'm going to explain this quickly. Now, when I put the cursor here at the first word here and go to page break and click on break, what happened? Yeah, so it simply says that move everything from where my cursor is to a new page. That's what the break does, the page break does. Is that okay? So I undo it. So we all know what the page break does. Now, the next item has to do with a session break. So please pay attention here. Now, I'm putting the cursor where I have session break inserted. Okay? So session break is right here. Can you see that? So I go to the break again and go to session break. Now, session break is in two parts. You can do a session break to move the item to the next page, or a session break for the item to be on the same page. So what I'm going to do now is to have it on the same page. So I'll click continuous. So there's a session break inserted right here, and it's continuous. Now, this will allow me to format this here into different um, formats. Let's say I can break this into different columns, whilst the top remains a single column. Is that okay? So here I come to columns, and then I can do three. That is what I got after doing the break. Now, you realize that this here have not been affected in any way. Okay. Now, so what I've done is to do a session break. Now, I'm going to put the cursor by what I refer to as a page break, and then do a column break. And you will tell me what the column break does. So here, I go to in here. The cursor is right in front here, right? And then I'm going to click on column break. What happened? It moved the entire column to a new one, right? Now, in the same way, if I put it right here and do the same thing, what will happen? It move it to the next page, making it to have the three columns that I desire. Is that okay? Do you understand? Right. So that is the use of the column break. Right. Now, how do you tell that there's a session break within a paper or on a paper? Now, again, we go to home and click on the hide and show button. And again, you can see all the breaks showing right here. Can you see here? There's a session break here. There's a column break here. There's a column break here. Can you see that? Right. So the hide and show will reveal the session break and the column breaks or the page breaks. Do you understand? 
Okay. Any question on what we've done so far? All right. So the last option has to do with the session break moving to the next page. All right. So I can also do a session break here. So, and then I go to layout, break, and then I do um, next page. So, insert a session break and instead what? I start the new session or what? A next page. So, what it simply means is that I want to start a new session on this page. In other words, I want to format this into a different, okay, columns. All right. Now, let's do otherwise. Um, so here I just want to check. So there are no, I've removed all the breaks here by just undoing them. Now, so let's see something. I want to change this here to three columns. So I do here and um, columns and I choose three. What happened right before the columns came? What happened? A session break came by default, okay? In some cases, you will not get this, but I think by the advanced form of um, the word, you get the session break popping up by ASO. Is that okay? Now, if I come here again, and I want to break this into, sorry, two columns. Now, this is giving me one instead of two. So how do I get my two columns if I want page break to be the next one? I want page break to go to the next column. What do I do? Yes. I use column break. Very good. So I do that. And then it goes there. Are we okay? All right. So that is how to work on this. Um, right. So in some past question, you are asked to, first of all, remove the breaks on a paper before you even start the work. Right. So let me show you one such example, and then we will... Um, go straight to i think it's march 2020 so let's check march 2020 um is it march yeah let's check march 2020 um paper two two okay so let's see if this is it yeah so it's there so can you see this here what did it say Good. So remove any preset page breaks in the document. So that, that was the first thing you were asked to do right after formatting the, um, the document. Um, let's say the orientation, right? The page size and orientation. The next thing you had to do was to remove any preset breaks. Is that okay? All right. So that is it for 